Hello everyone, it's your host MX2, and in this video we'll be going over some of the fundamentals of hard ops and box cutter and just make a simple little bolt. So to get started, we'll press X and delete the cube, and we might as well delete both items in our outliner too, we don't need them. Let us press Alt W and start box cutter. We'll press D and jump over to circle, polygon, and we'll start with a six sided circle. And by holding control, since we have dots enabled, in my case I have static dots. If I uncheck it, I have regular dots. And I can actually snap that dot to the center. And from here, just extrude the beginning of my bolt. The next thing I want to do is press D and we want to basically set this to 12 and we'll go to join and just turn off exact. That way we don't have to deal with any exact switching. And from here, we are just going to draw this part. And from here, uh, I'll press Q to go in edit mode. But instead of bringing it back like that, we can demonstrate this another way. So let's say I wanted to draw this shape, but I definitely know after tabbing it that I want to edit it afterwards, as in go in edit mode and make modifications. Well, this is where I would want to hold shift and then I'm able to basically do something called shift to live. And if I tap into edit mode, I'm now editing the cutter itself. So here I'm modifying the cutter to basically apply it. However, if I wanted to, I could also click on smart apply in edit mode. And now that apply has been made real, meaning that the cutter is no longer live because we don't need it live anymore. So I will use dots to jump off again. And let's extrude this upwards. In fact, I'll extrude it downwards and this is what we're getting as a result. Because of the simplicity of our cylinders, it's being a little harsh on the auto smooth, but we can just raise the auto smooth via hops, just shift clicking, sharpen and rolling the wheel. We can raise the auto smooth to something a little more accepting. So now what we wanna do is control A and we'll just do geometry to mesh just to apply everything, including our sharpening marks, which we didn't want. And we're just gonna bevel the end and so far, so good. We're making delightful progress. In fact, we're just using control R to just check our edge flow. And now from here, if we wanted to perform a correction, we could either use hop select tool, or we can actually jump into insolve to do it as well. For this case, I will use insolve where basically I can just map it to offset. And by having offset map to left mouse click, that means that I can just select all of these edges, click and drag and it will basically protect those boundaries for me. But we actually want a little more than that. So this is where select tool differs. So if we press S, we're on select. And if I press B, we can see that we also have that kind of same problem happening where we're just not able to really bevel it that well. So let's try it another way. I'm going to jump over to connect and we're just going to make the most minimal connection while dissolving these edges that are not needed. like so. And then from here, now that we have all of our edges selected along the side, I could have reselected them with control shift, right mouse clicking, I believe. But instead we'll jump back to offset. And now we have offset it with a nice little tooth. And what we can do is basically dissolve that, form the connection between them. And we're just basically solving this real fast as we're working through this because we do want this to survive subdivision. And the best way to do that is to just prepare early. So continuing on, we're just dissolving useless edges. And we can also place loop cuts repeatedly. In fact, I tried to use repeat uh, with control R. It looks like control R isn't a thing for loop cut, strange. I'll have to check into that. I need my loop cut to uh, be attached that way. But continuing on, so now that we have inserted loop cuts, we can make all these connections. And there's probably simpler ways that we can make this connection a lot less flashy. For example, I can select this, press Control T, Alt J. And that almost sounds like a good idea, except for the part where I had to press a bunch of buttons and this just allows me to click and drag. So for this side, we'll just press I to inset. And we just want to control drag these because we have control map to collapse. So by collapsing these, they are all merging in the center as quads, just like above. And then we are just getting rid of the edges that are not needed. So something like that will certainly do. And then from here to finish it up, it's just a matter of making the connections. And if we are curious in what we have remaining, let's click on analyze and analyze will let us know. These are the areas that are no longer 
or that are still inadequate and require resolution. So let's get in here. And what we'll do is delete this face, select this loop, and we'll choose grid fill. And something like that will certainly do. Now what we want to do is select this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. And I held Alt and Shift as I clicked each one of those. And we'll just drag offset to just get that correct. And we are making immense progress. And I'm not a big fan of seeing all this marking. I'm just tolerating it for now, but we can always go into operations and choose clear marks. And we basically no longer have any sharps being marked. We may even want to place a loop down there, but really what we'd want to do is grab this loop and drag that offset in order to give it an offset in order to hold that together. So now you're probably wondering, well, what about the threads? Well, the threads are my favorite part. We'll bring a loop here. We'll grab this series of faces and we'll click on to thread in the Q menu in edit mode. And now with this, we have threads added. And if we tab back into object mode, we see that our bolt is complete. In fact, how complete are we? Let's press control three in order to add a few levels of subdivision. We see that we probably could benefit from a little bit of edge loop assistance happening here just to hold it together. We also may want to press control tilde and just adjust the smoothing inside of the hops helper. So now we are looking at a final result that is fully subdivision capable and also looking very good. So from here, let's press Q, add a camera. And while looking at the camera from top view, So maybe place it like so. And with that, we have completed this tutorial. So basically the goal was to get users in, have them make a quick nut. And from there, just learn the basics of the tool. However, this isn't a nut, it's a bolt and we need a nut, right? So because I said that, let's do that. Let's, let's try it a couple of ways. I was looking at this thinking, what if I tried duplicating it up like so? And then I press control period to move the mirror origin here press control period to turn that off. And then we click on the side we want to keep. And from here, we're basically mirroring like so. And we can just set this up to be threaded as well. But how will we do that? You know, we've done so much. Uh, let's first of all, get rid of threads. We don't need it for our duplicate or at least not in that fashion. And I'm just looking at this, thinking about how we want to go about doing this. Sometimes I try to think on the fly and I get caught just being a thinker. So Alt Shift S one or Alt Shift S and then pressing one will get us something like this. And we'll just extrude that down and we'll use symmetry to make the top and bottom the same. And so now we just have these two areas, which we don't even want subdivision visible in edit mode. Sorry about that, you know me. I never have a subdivision showing in edit mode. Now we have this shape. We are grabbing these two elements. And we wanna make sure that we are able to interact properly with our threading. I mean, it's probably fine before. I just was uh, overthinking it, my apologies. So let's press Q and we'll go into operations and we'll hit it with a two thread again. And we see that this time we are having issues. Uh, sometimes it is able to go through and other times it's not. So we'll remove the subdivision for now and go in and from here, adjust our threads. And we see that, you know, some areas just aren't able to be handled like this. So how will we make this work whenever the loop goes so wayward? That is definitely an interesting question and also one that I may not even have the answer for. You know, the story behind this particular feature is definitely a curious one, but we definitely need to solve threads inside of hops. And that is what this tool does. So without going into the details of the minutia of how it was created, we can at least end on, we have completed it. But just know that if you have subdivision first, things will get weird because that is not how it goes. But now, we have the right result. So we rotate this thing and it will go up kind of like when Sonic is running on these in Metropolis Zone and Sonic 2. But there I am thinking about video games again. In fact, let's bring this up 
and take a look at our result. And with that, this video is complete. We have modeled both the bolt and the nut within just 10 minutes, having fun with hard ops box cutter and just a little bit of insolve.